Welcome. This video covers how to use PROC import to read in external data. So our overall goal here is if I want to do some analyses, I first need to take raw data and bring it into SAS. So we need to create a SAS data set. To be able to do that, we should first understand common raw data formats. So i.e. what kind of structure does raw data often come in? One way is delimited data, and we'll talk about what that means in just a second. And another common way is Excel. So an Excel file we might want to read in. So we'll look at how to use PROC import in this video to read in nicely, nicely formatted delimited data as well as Excel data. So first, what is delimited data? Well, a delimiter is a character or character strings that separate the raw data entries in your file. So a common delimiter would be a comma. That might be the actual value that separates my data in my raw file. If you happen to know that you have delimited data, so you know it's a delimited data file, but you don't, you don't quite know what that delimiter is, what you can often do is open up your file in something like Notepad, Notepad++, or something like that, um, and that will allow you to see visually, usually, what type of delimiter you have in your data. So again, um, some of the common delimiters that you might see would be a comma delimited file, and we tend to call these things comma separated value file. So we call that a CSV, comma separated values. And again, you can see the raw data elements in the data set itself are separated by commas. Here is an example of a space delimited file. So in between every data entry, there is a space. So the space is the delimiter of this file. Oftentimes a space delimited file will be called a dot text or a dot dat file. Another common delimiter is a tab. And so you can see that this is a tab delimited file. You can see that there is a set number of spaces there that is actually a tab separating these values. And this is usually saved as a dot text or a dot TSV for tab separated value file. And then again, you can just sort, sort of have any character representing your delimiter. So we're going to read in this data in a moment. This is a greater than delimited file. General delimited files um, don't have a common extension, but you'd usually see something like .text or .dat. For those. Okay, so again, um, when we're dealing with SAS on demand, we need to tell SAS how to find the data set. SAS on demand can only find data that's in our shared folder or that you've uploaded to SAS on demand yourself. To upload your data, we just mentioned this before, but the actual process would be to go to your folder that you want, you click on the upload button, and then you find the file on your computer and you upload it to SAS on demand there. It will then show up as a raw data file in your folder and then you can um, have access to it in SAS. Another option is for certain data files and certain data types, uh, we can read them in from a URL. That is, we can read them in from a website. So we'll also see some examples of doing that. Okay, so we saw this proc import code that was created using the import wizard. So let's go through that in detail and make sure that we understand all the pieces of it so that when we change what type of file we're reading in, we will know what to change. So again, um, data file here at the top is telling us um, where to find the file. So this is saying, where is my raw data located? It's in the reference, and that reference is given by what you see between the quoted strings up there. So data file is telling SAS where to look for the raw data. And then DBMS, this is really important. This is telling SAS what type of raw data you're dealing with. And so DBMS stands for Database Management System. Again, this will change based off of which type of raw data you have, whether it's delimited, whether it's comma delimited, whether it's tab delimited, or generically delimited, for instance. And then out, remember that out statement, I'm sorry, that out option on the proc import statement tells SAS where you want to save the SAS data set that's being created. You can use a one or two level name. Again, one level name will automatically go to the work library. A two level name can go to any of the libraries where you have write access. And then get names tells SAS that the first row of the data in the raw file corresponds to variable names. We'll also see an example where that's not the case here. Okay, so DBMS is obviously very important. This is telling SAS what type of raw data you have. So we should know some of the common um, values that DBMS takes. So we've already seen this Excel XLSX version. That means that we have a newer version of an Excel file. But you can see that here that we have a special one for CSV, 
special one for tab, and DLM to be a generic delimiter. So we'll see some examples of this. Now, uh, again, if we want to read in data to a permanent library, the first thing we need to do is set up our permanent library, make sure that SAS recognizes it. We need to do this at the beginning of every SAS, SAS session. And so um, we'll do that here with a libname statement, just like we've done before. Remember that we define the library name, and there should be a space here. We define the library name that we're going to use, and then we give it the path to that folder. That's going to set up a permanent library where we can save data sets. Okay, let's read in a comma separated value file or a .csv file to start with. So it's, um, it's called neuralgia.csv. This is in the shared folder. So you should have access to it. You just need to find the path to it within the shared folder. So proc import is going to do the work for us. We just need to specify which type of data we have via the DBMS option. So we'll use proc import. Proc import statement starts it. Remember that this is a statement that is across a number of lines here. So this semicolon is ending our statement. The first thing we're going to give it is the data file. So where is the physical location of the file? And this is a very long path here. And this is why you might use a reference in this case, because that's such a long path. Um, but first, um, we're going to specify which user we are. So again, this number is going to change based off of you versus me. But then the rest of this, this is the shared folder, and this is the um, address to the shared folder and that file. So only that first part will change for you. Then we say, oh, I know this is a CSV file, so let's change my database management system. And then let's specify that I want to put this into my, um, my NCSU library as a data set called Neuralgia. This data set in the raw data file itself does have um, the first row representing variable names, so we'll do get names equal yes. Finish off that proc import step with a run statement. Great. So um, we now have created that SAS 7 bdat file. If you go over to your uh, mylib folder, which is where we've associated the NCSU library with, you should now be able to see the neuralgia.sas 7 bdat file. And of course, if you go to your library section, you should be able to see that data set there as well. Again, this is now a permanent data set. So even when I close SAS, this data set will stay there. I just need to now tell SAS every time that I open it where that library is located so it can then access those um, SAS data sets. Okay, so that was one option is reading in that file from a shared folder or a local folder that's on SAS on demand. Another option is to read this thing from a URL. So read it in from a website. And so if we're going to read in from a URL, we do need to use the file name statement in this case. So uh, we would start with a file name statement to create a reference to the URL that we're using. And so uh, we're going to still just give it a name to reference it later on. So here I'm going to call it from web. But then we have to add this extra bit, this URL that comes before our path. So we're going to be saying that this is going to be read from the, the internet and we're going to read in from this website. Notice that this is actually reading in a .csv from this website. So again, we are just creating a file reference to this URL in this case. And now when we go down to proc import, all we're going to do is change data file to from that path to this reference to this URL. And I'm going to save this in the working library as a data set called Neuralgia2. Okay. So that was pretty easy. Um, as long as we know it's a CSV file and it's nicely formatted, we can read that in from the web or we can read it in locally. Remember that DBMS is going to specify which type of file you're reading in and that these commonly used um, delimited delimiters have special um, terms for them. So CSV has its own term, tab has its own term, and so on. Again, if you are unsure, you know you have delimited data, but you don't know what the delimiter is, you might want to open that raw data file in Notepad or some other program like that. If you have a gener generic delimiter, not like one of these commonly used ones, use the DLM option on the DBMS. And then you have to add in a delimiter statement to your proc import step. So we're going to add a whole other statement in that proc import step. So let's go ahead and see an example of that. We're going to read in this greater than delimited file that does not have column names. So this file is called umps2012.txt. And this is data that um, Dr. Osborne here at NC State and myself, we downloaded um, many years ago um, about umpires and which umpires were calling baseball games. So this data set, 
um, is available via a URL. So we're going to read it in from a URL. We're going to create our reference to that thing first. And then we are going to put that reference here so that it knows where to find that file. Notice that we are using the DLM option on DBMS. So this is saying we're going to use a generic delimiter. And then we have to add in this delimiter statement down here. So this is an extra statement that we extra statement that we need here because this is not a common delimiter. And this statement gets used anytime we use DLM. Again, um, this particular raw data file does not have column names in it as the first row. So get name should be set to no in this case. If you read in this using that code you see there, you'll end up seeing this as the output data. And you can see that the variable names here are not descriptive, right? They're just generically created by SAS to be var1 through var6. But you can see that the data looks like it may be read incorrectly. We just need to figure out what these variable names are so that we can give them more meaningful names. All right, so we know what these names are. Um, I'll tell them to you here in a second, but how do we actually change them on the data set itself? Well, what we can do is use a data step to copy the data set and modify it. So for instance, um, here is some basic syntax that you might use to copy a data set in SAS. So we're gonna call the um, data statement to start a data step. And this is where you're defining the new data set that you are creating. And you can use a one or two level name here. Then we are going to use the set statement. The set statement copies an already existing SAS data set. Again, you can use a one or two level name. And then there are a bunch of different statements you can use on a data step. You can create new variables, you can rename variables, you can filter observations or subset observations. So there's tons and tons of things you can do at this point. And then you end your data step with a run statement. So what we want to do is rename our variables. So there's a rename statement and there's also a rename option. We'll cover these in more detail later, but this would be how we could rename the variables from var1 through var6 to more meaningful names. So I happen to know from somewhere that these are the appropriate variable names. So what we're going to do is start by creating a new data set, and we're actually going to write overwrite the data set that we are copying. So I'm going to use a two level name to say in my NCSU library, I'm going to create a data set called umps, where I am copying from the NCSU library, a data set called umps. So I'm going to overwrite it. And then I'm going to use the rename statement to appropriately rename these variables. And so we would have to learn about the syntax of the rename statement to be able to do this. Again, we'll go into that a little bit in a little bit more detail later on. But the default variable names are var1 through var6. So what we need to do is just put var1 equal the new name, var2 equal the new name. And that's going to change the variable names in the copied and overwritten data set. Fantastic. So now if you look at the output of that, you will see that you have much better looking variable names over here and up top. So that's how we can manipulate, manipulate those variable names whenever we are not given them in the raw data file. Okay, now let's jump to reading in a, an Excel data set. Again, we've already done this once, but let's do some options on it. So in this case, um, we saw before that the first sheet on, a data, on an Excel data set is read in by default. We might want to change that. So um, for instance, this will read in the first uh, sheet by default. So I'm going to use proc import. Oh, sorry. I'm going to use proc import. I'm going to reference the data file in the shared folder. It's called censuseded.xlsx. Uh, I'm going to say this is an Excel file, a newer one. I'm going to save it in the NCSU library as a data set called census. Get names equal yes. So the first row of this Excel spread spreadsheet represents variable names. Again, by default, this is going to read the first sheet in that Excel file. If, on the other hand, you wanted to read in a second sheet or a different sheet, um, you can use the sheet statement to specify what you should do. So you can use sheet and then give the string corresponding to the sheet name in the file. You can also use integers to represent one, two, three, first, second, or third sheet, that kind of thing as well. But that's the sheet name in the, in the Excel file. Okay, so let's jump into SAS. Let's do a quick example reading in a delimited file from a shared folder. 
Um, we'll utilize that database management system option, and then we'll also specify where to save that data set using that out equal option as well. Okay, here we are in SAS. Let's go ahead and create a new program. I'll put the header in later, but I'll put that there for a reminder. Uh, we'll go ahead and use our snippet to grab our library command. And what we want to do at this point is read in some data. So we're going to read it in from a local server file here. So uh, again, you have access to all the data in the shared folder. So there's a data set called um, crabs.xlsx. So let's go ahead and read that in locally. So we'll use proc import. We have to give it the data file. So this is going to be the location of the file. If you're reading in locally and you don't want to use the import wizard, how do you figure out exactly what the path to this thing is? Well, you can right click on it and go to properties and it will give you the very, very long path to this shared folder. So I can copy all of that, maybe. Copy all of that. And I can put that in a quoted string here. And I will tell SAS exactly where to find that file. Okay, then I need to tell it what type of file this is. So DBMS, database management system. This is an XLSX file, so a newer version of Excel. Tell it the output data set. So here, out equal, I'll put it in my NCSU library as a data set called mycrabs. And then uh, get names. This is a, most all data sets that I'm going to give you are going to have the variable names in it. So I'll do get names equal yes. And run. I'm going to run all of this together because I, if I'm saving this to the NCSU library, I need to make sure that I've told SAS how to reference that. So we'll put all that together. Hit run. Always check the log after we run our code. Looks fine. I don't see red or green. So now we go to our output data. It looks like we now have this data set read in. It's in uh, ncsu.mycrafts. So fantastic. That wasn't so bad. Now we'll save this data, this program for later use as well. Okay. So to recap, hopefully now you have a pretty reasonable idea how to read in nicely delimited data and also basic Excel data as well. We can use proc import and just change the DBMS option to specify the file type and the delimiter type. After this, what we're going to do is look at reading in other types of data um, using data steps as well as proc import.